Well, an Agile retrospective gives the team an opportunity at the end of the sprint to take a look back at the sprint that just ended and determine what it is that went well, what problem areas they may have had, and how can they improve upon those areas as they move forward through the next sprint. What a lot of coaches like to use is a book called Agile Retrospectives, uh, authored by Esther Darby and Diana Larson. And in that book, they highlight five key areas or five steps that you walk through. The first step being setting the stage, the second step being gathering data, the third step being generating insights, then we move on to deciding what to do, and then finally the last step, closing. In setting the stage, it's pretty much just that. It gives the coach or the facilitator an opportunity to present what the particular technique is going to be used. It also is an opportunity to get the team comfortable and safe with the environment of having a retrospective. Uh, a good example of setting the stage may be asking each individual in two words, tell me what you want to get out of today's retrospective. So the second step, gathering data, is, a, is beginning of the meat and potatoes of the retrospective. And it's, it's just that, you're gathering data, you're gathering information from the team as far as what went well, what didn't go well, or whatever particular technique you're using in the retrospective. So the third step is generating insights. And after you're, after you're done gathering the data, what you really want to do as a facilitator is tell your team to take a step back and now let's look at everything that you've generated. Do you see any patterns? Do you see any uh, commonalities here? Or is everything varied and, and very different? Let's talk about how can we group things? How can we make things uh, separated if they really are apart from each other? One of the biggest things you want to be able to walk away with are actionable items, doesn't have to be many, to committing to doing for that next sprint. And not only did that, but there are times when you may want to assign these items to a specific individual, or perhaps the whole team is taking on this actionable item and committing to doing it. Uh, I facilitated retrospectives where the team wanted to walk away with a commitment to start their stand-ups on time and to finish them on time. The fifth step, closing, is pretty much that. Close the retrospective by reviewing everything that you went over, reviewing the actionable items that you agreed to and committed to. So following those five steps has helped a lot of coaches really begin to organize and plan through the retrospectives that they want to have with their teams.